little fun fact about me. I really like to drink coffee, a lot of it. And I have a feeling that I am not alone. I'm sure a lot of you like to drink coffee as well. So the story, this next one coming up, definitely caught my attention and I'm sure it's gonna catch yours. A Mayo Clinic just released a study about coffee and it found that if you were 55 and under and drink more than four cups per day, you may be at greater risk of dying early and not just from heart problems or something like that, from all problems. So I brought up our Dr. Debbie on the show to break this down for us. So, you know, we, we see all of these studies. It seems like every other week, doc, Dr. Debbie, we're hearing it's coffee's good, it's bad. This latest study is basically saying you shouldn't drink any more than four cups. Can you tell us more about what led to this conclusion? Sure, Pamela. I feel the same way as you about coffee, actually. I love my morning cup. So this study was a little bit concerning. It came out this past week and it showed that basically if you're under 55 and you're a heavy coffee drinker, you might be more at risk to die of any cause, not just heart-related problems or something related to digestion. Now one thing to keep in mind is in an ideal study, what you do is you look at people who are non-coffee drinkers and you give them large amounts of coffee to see what happens. This study actually looked at people over the course of 30 years and they didn't actually do that. What they did was they looked at people who were already coffee drinkers, heavy coffee drinkers, and people who are not, uh, and just let them continue with their usual habits. So there might be things that are different about people who drink coffee regularly compared to people who don't drink coffee, and those might be factors as well. So what about the age? You said it's, this applies to people who are under the age of 55. Do you know why that is? Well, we don't know for sure, but there are other studies looking at people who are a little bit older, so a different age range uh, between 50 and 70. This was another powerful NIH study that came out about a year ago, and they found in that group that coffee was protective. So we don't know. I mean, there might be different reasons why people of different ages drink coffee. People who are younger may be drinking coffee for uh, reasons related to work or stress. I know, for example, the time that I drank the most coffee in my life was during residency, and that was because I was mm -hmm. exhausted all the time, uh, but I felt like I was under a lot of pressure to actually get things done, so I drank a large amount of coffee at that time. So it might actually be more related to sleep, uh, or sleep deprivation, and also related to uh, perhaps even the type of coffee that people drink. So we don't mm -hmm. know if people in different age groups drink more espresso versus filtered coffee versus other types of coffee. And not only that, you know, I know a lot of people drink the venti cups of coffee, sometimes four of those, so that doesn't help. And this study is talking about the smaller cups, it, you know, eight ounces. What are we supposed to believe here, though, Dr. Deb? You know, there, there was a, a recent report that came out saying that coffee could actually lower risk of early death. What do you think we should believe, and, and how much coffee do you think we should drink? Well, I think it's hard to say for sure. I mean, at least uh, in terms of individual people, I think we need to look at people's symptoms. So if you're a coffee drinker and you're actually having, let's say, palpitations or you're having problems with reflux or heartburn, then I think you probably need to cut down anyway. I mean, we mm -hmm. see people also who have a lot of headaches or chronic pain sometimes related to caffeine use, having large amounts of coffee. So I would say then it might be a good idea to kind of cut down. But I definitely think we need to look at why people drink coffee. So for example, if somebody's drinking large amounts of coffee because they never get any sleep, I think that's a bigger thing to look at than actually the number of cups that they're drinking. So mm -hmm. you need to look at sleep deprivation. Uh, for example, even just last week, there was somebody in New Zealand, a lady who drove 200 miles, just texting and driving and sleeping at the same time under the effect of sleeping pills. So definitely the reasons that people drink caffeine, the reasons that people stay awake or don't sleep, these mm -hmm. are all factors to be considered. Yeah, I read that's such a crazy story and more and more people are relying on sleeping pills according to the numbers out there and, and as a result probably drinking more coffee as well. So lots of factors to look at. Thank you so much Dr. Debbie for breaking it down Thank for us. You. We appreciate it. Thanks so much.